This video is sponsored by Factor. Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Models Memories Weekly episode 150. There's as many of these things as there are Pokemon. Models Memories is a show about nothing and is filmed in front of a live studio audience. This is a show where I talk about my painting, modeling, and work experiences from the week. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, you put out three videos a week. Oh. Could I possibly have more to say? Well, I do, and here goes. This week, I almost finished a model, but it's my best model ever. Games Workshop changed up 40k a whole bunch and I bought something. But before we get to that, I'm a little bit hungry. Factor makes meeting your nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. Their team of gourmet chefs create each meal using only ingredients with integrity to help you feel your best all day long. Meal plans range from 4 to 18 meals per week, and you can easily add, reduce, or skip meals depending on your needs. Factor's chef-prepared meals make it easy to eat well, and avoid takeout and ordering in so you never have to opt for something that isn't good for you. And their meals are ready quickly. Your meal is delivered fresh, never frozen to your door. Just heat, eat, and enjoy. For long 10-hour painting sessions, it's hard not to reach for something ultra convenient and probably made out of the same stuff I'm painting with. But Factor meals are really good quality, even more convenient, and actually tasty. I can heat it quick, eat it quick, and get right back to painting. You can amp up your Factor order with add-ons like proteins, juices, energy bites, veggie sides, desserts, and more. And don't worry, Factor snacks and desserts accommodate those following plant-based and keto diets. Head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use code EONS50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. That's right, use EONS50 to get 50% off your first box. Let's look at the event exclusive miniatures because they have been revealed and typically it's one really, really cool model and one that's like, eh, it's, okay. it's, it's fine, it's fine, it's nothing special, but... But then I go to Adepticon and I see a line around the entire building for people waiting to buy these event exclusive miniatures. But this year, they actually are pretty darn cool. One is a Crute. Games Workshop is going hard on the Crute and it is a jumpin' slashin' Crute. Really cool. I still think like if I if I wanted to collect a Crute army and I kind of do want to collect a Crute army, but I have I have so many army projects going on this year. I don't know if I can fit it in, oh, but I already have 16 Crute and two Crutoxes. So like, how hard would it be to get it up? If they, if Games Workshop makes a Narlock, if Games Workshop makes the great Narlock, I'm, I'm gonna have to get it. But getting back to the event exclusive miniature, he's pretty darn cool, but I don't know if he's something that I can't get from either the new Crute box or the, um, the Kill Team Crute, because they both have some pretty cool, like, thematic and dynamically posed miniatures. So if I was like a hardcore Crute fan, I would definitely need to get Jumpin' Crute, but otherwise he can probably be skipped. Like he's not the most unique thing ever, which I think is a good balance for Games Workshop to walk with event, event exclusive miniatures. You don't want it to be something like, oh my God, I absolutely need that for my collection. Otherwise it'll be incomplete. Like. If it was a named character, like if it was Creed or something, one of the uh, Imperial Guard character, then it's like, oh God, I have to eBay that or I have to make sure that I get my hands on that. But if it's just like pretty darn cool Crew, then you know, it's a little bit of a take or leave, but it's pretty cool when you take it. The second model is the Rook Knight. And it's a, it's a lovely little miniature. It kind of reminds me of like old school Games Workshop models are kind of old school miniatures in general where they were just one piece of lump lead. Like it doesn't look, it's not particularly crazy. It's not particularly flashy, but it has just some really good personality. A suit of armor that looks like a bird. It's kind of got bird feather things going on on its greaves and on its shoulder pads. He's looking at a little crow that just is happy to be there. It's just a really, a really nice little miniature. It looks like it'd be fun to paint. Games Workshop just went with like gunmetal, but I feel like like painters who have a little bit more of a painterly hand, like Ninjan, would do something really, really cool. Maybe draw a lot of attention to that crow with some like really bright, vibrant colors and have those kind of splash onto his armor to show off reflections. I mean, it's a suit of armor, so you kind of have a lot of really, really interesting shapes to really show off some lighting. I think it's a really, really fun miniature. I don't know, I guess it would be for Cities of Sigmar, but he doesn't fit into Cities of Sigmar super well. They're not incredibly knightly. They're more like peasant, like halfway between peasant and knight. 
but it, and I like it. It's a really, really cool miniature. He's got a short sword and a, a club sickle, <laughs> a club sickle, which is obviously a flavor of popsicle, but it's also a club with a big scythe on one end of it. It's a very interesting weapon. And the crow is a little low poly. <laughs> it looks a little funny, but with the appropriate paint job, it would look great. I just like it. It's a nice little miniature, and I like that it exists. I think th these are actually both really good models, pretty good event exclusives. I think they'd both be really fun to paint up, and they're not anything like you absolutely need it. It's not It's not a like a Ursula Creed sculpt that is limited edition, you can't get it, and it's way better than the one that you can just buy. Like, that would be a little bit of a bummer. So... A plus Games Workshop on the event exclusive miniatures. But now I have to take away that A plus because of the balanced data slate. Games Workshop showed off new points and new rules for Warhammer 40,000. Looking at the meta watch, everything supposedly is pretty darn even. Some armies are really suffering, like Imperial Guard and Drukari. Oh boy, Drukari. I Drukari is a glass cannon with really fragile cannons. Like, if they don't go off, if your Dark Lances are just missing, you lose the game. And I was really, really disappointed to see the points changes because, number one, Necrons, nothing, but that's probably fine. Necrons are doing great. Tyranid are, have a lot of ups and downs. Thank goodness they didn't touch my zone thropes. I would have rioted if they made my zone thropes even more expensive. But a lot of good drops for the Tyranid but points drops are really lame because I was playing a game against Sean this weekend and I lost pretty bad. I was playing uh, Unending Swarm Detachment for my Tyranids. I kind of br brought a bad list against tanks. I kind of went Swarm. Don't go Swarm against lots of uh, Blast Indirect Fire and Lehman Russes. It, it doesn't work. It really doesn't. A lot of the Tyranid units kind of lack punch. They lack tooth. And just making them cheaper doesn't necessarily help with stuff like that because, great, my unit is a little bit cheaper, maybe I can even bring an extra unit, but without the actual punch. Like, I wanted to see, I would love to see actual changes to units to make them a little bit better, a little bit more interesting, and have a little bit better utility because it just doesn't matter if I'm bringing more of something if it stinks. Like, if it just doesn't have a good, you know, give me some combat weapons better than strength eight. I don't want my Swarm Lord to be swatting a tank on fives because I'm just going to miss them all. So I was really kind of disappointed just to see a bunch of points changes because I feel like it doesn't really change up the army at all. However, Tyranids are also kind of in an okay place. The Jukari Games Workshop totally agreed with me that they needed help. Oh boy, did they need help. And so they kind of did something new. They gave the Dark Eldar a brand new detachment. No codex required. So the Dark Eldar currently are only index, but they have two available detachments. Their original detachment, Real Space Raiders, was fine, but it definitely felt like an index detachment because it just gives a little something to everybody. Oh, do you, you, you should bring your Cabalites Cabal, you should bring your Homunculus Coven, and you should bring your Witch Cult. And we'll sprinkle some abilities for all of them. How about that? Is that a good, a good way to run an army? No, it's not. Because every, they all have their own strengths and weaknesses. And if you just spread your forces out really thin, you're not really taking advantage of any one thing. And so the Dark Elder were really struggling. Lance Spam is the name of the game. And some things like witches just, you, you don't bring witches. However, their new detachment, the Sky Splinter Assault, is like, we thought about it. What makes a Dark Elder army a Dark Elder army? And they went for it. It is boats. It's all about that boat. It's great. This detachment looks like so much fun. You don't get quite as many pain tokens, although those are easier to get now with the changes to them, to their overall army rule. But oh, everything, the enhancements are all about boats. Oh, one of the ones I'm really excited for is a, a uh, enhancement that you can throw on anybody. And if you hop out of a transport, the bearers unit cannot be targeted with Overwatch. Incredible utility there. 
like all of a sudden I'm like, I could throw Lilith and a bunch of witch or not Lilith, but I could throw a succubus and a bunch of witches into a raider and hop them out and to take out like something with torrents, a, a unit that would usually absolutely destroy any of my units in the game. All of a sudden they can't use Overwatch. I can just free charge them, hopefully clear up that horrible, horrible threat. Like it could tie up Space Marine, aggra Flamestorm aggressors, like all of a sudden something that my army could not deal with. Super easy, barely an inconvenience. Really, really excited. All of these stratagems are about transports. One, that's, and all of them are one command point. Super cheap. I can tear in one of my boats for one enemy shooting attack with uh, into a four up invulnerable save. So 50-50, it doesn't die, which is so nice. Like I can just park that boat right out in the open and just be like, yeah, use, use up all your shooting attacks to take it down. Even if I make it such a tempting target that my opponent like shoot, does finish it off, just chipping away at its invulnerable save, that is a strategy that could work while the rest of my army is getting into position and doing things. It made, I think the thing that really gets me excited about this is witches are kind of good now and they really weren't before, but just having so much ability to take advantage of these boats makes them so much more worthwhile. I might combat squad a, a, a squad of witches. They, the Dark Elder have a unit called a Venom and a Venom is a little tiny set transport that can hold five guys, but you can, at the start of the game, combat squad, a squad of 10, so Cabalites or witches, and put five of them into the Venom and five of them into a Raider or five of them just on foot. And all of a sudden, witches can have free grenade stratagem. So all of a sudden, five witches in a Venom, even if they're like the bad witches, like they don't, five witches are not gonna do much, but they can, they can be in a little Venom, zip up the board, hop out, spend a CP, to be to have be eligible to charge that turn, they could even pop grenades, and then they can even get back in the venom. It's it's a lot of command. That's like three command points to make all that happen. But arguably, it would be worth it because I feel like it's a really good move to spend your command points kind of on your worst stuff to make to like make them pop off. Because your good stuff is good, you can almost count on it. But all of a sudden, if your opponent's like a 70 point venom and a 35 point squad or a 40 point squad of witches, like who cares? That's not even a problem. All of a sudden it wipes a squad. And it's like, how did that happen? That's not supposed to happen. I did not plan for this. I no longer have something to hold that midfield objective like I planned on. Like just that having that ability there all of a sudden makes the army cook. It makes the, it gives the army so much more life. It's really, really interesting, and I'm really excited to play with this detachment, where before I was just planning on like, yeah, I'm gonna play the spiky elves, which are pretty much the elves, but spiky and not having as many units. But now, like Dark Eldar are the battle boats, and I'm taking seven battle boats. Like it's, ah, oh, I'm, I'm really excited now. I had my year all planned out for the Dark Eldar and my list written, I'm not sure if my list is gonna change. I'm gonna play it more in Tabletop Simulator with the new rules and see if there's anything I can do to make it a little bit better. I might try to get in some more boats. Uh, I was taking a lot of Kronos pain engines, a lot of Mandrakes and Incubi, where now it might be better to have more things like Cabalites and Witches, which is good. You should be have like, bringing your basic troop should be a thing that you want to do where, especially in Warhammer 40k 10th edition, where every unit is available to you and you don't have to take much, you don't have to take anything specifically. Usually it's how hard can I load up on the really good, really big, really efficient, cool things. And like, I don't even want to take Space Marine Intercessors, but Games Workshop, they came up with a way for me to want to take my basic troops and they're going to be really fun to play with. It's Really, really cool. I think they should give armies new uh, detachments, just give them out like candy. I mean, I don't want to wait for the Codex. And like some Codexes, like Codex Tyranids, there's like a couple of the detachments that are pretty cool, but a lot of them are, are really kind of meh. But the, the, I mean, the Dark the dark Eldar ones are night and day, the two of them. There's probably still something to the old uh, Real Space Raiders like just really, really loading up on power or on pain tokens. There's probably still some play there, but I am really excited to try this out. And I'm really excited to see what more comes to Warhammer 40K because I think that this is a really, really cool change. 
It also is great because they just released this online free PDF. Just download the uh, the Dark Eldar Index 1.1. Uh, don't do codexes anymore. Digital rules. We've tasted it, Games Workshop. We've tasted the era of 40K in a digital format, and it's so much better. It's so, so much better than physical. And I think the argument for physical is completely dead because how ridiculously complex and obtuse Games Work like 40K is. And that's what I like about it. I like being able to spend hours thinking of lists and abilities like other games, like I have so many little skirmish games, love having a book because it's just one book, a couple of rules, maybe some cards with actions on them. Those things are great to have in physical format because you don't need much. You can't play 40K without the internet, really. It takes a lot of work. Things like Battlescribe, Wahapedia, the Games Workshop app, which is okay, should be free, or at least shouldn't be part of the subscription service to maybe get an animation every now and again. It's really awkward. Just, just have everything be digital. We'll buy them, I'll keep buying the models. Just make the rules easier to get my hands on. Ah, <sighs> rant over, not quite over. It's so dumb that you have to buy a codex and then like a Webkins, open the codex and type the code into your app and update the app so that you can then see the thing you could see the day before, which is the actual rules and unit profiles for your weapons. And the app isn't even that good because if I'm if I'm playing 40K, I need to be able to see things really, really quickly. And that's why they've sold the dumb cards that are way too big. And so it's like, oh, what's, what's a overcharged plasma's toughness again? Let me just real quick find it. I have to click on the unit and then I have to click on the weapon and then click on the weapon drop down menu and then find like just put you made all of this data on fit onto cards. Just put the cards on the app so I can see it all in one shot or just have let me like click export on my list and then give me all of the the cards in front of me. It's ah, Games Workshop, Games Workshop. You're you're so close sometimes and sometimes you're so far off the mark, but ah. Dude, yeah, really excited to play some Dark Eldar. Ah, super, super excited, super happy, super confused, super annoyed, lots of adjectives. Ah, it's really cool. And speaking of really cool, I almost finished one of my fairies for Moonstone. Super excited for Moonstone. It looks like a really, really fun game. And it has, you can play it two player, three player, or four player. I guess you could probably like just custom game have more than that but we have game nights every Saturday. And so I'm really excited to actually have like war games that we can play because we always play board games and board games are fun, but I like war games. And so Moonstone looks like it's a really, really fun war game, board game kind of hybrid. But anyway, this is the best mini that I have ever painted. I'm really, really happy with how this model's turning out. I spent two hours painting her. Her wings still need a little attention. Her uh, flower bouquet hair is actually kind of tricky to paint really happy with how the custom base turned out, but I used my magnifying glass on this model. I have one of those magnifying glasses on a goose arm with a little LED ring around it, and I haven't touched it much. Uh, way back in the day, I painted a model using magnifying glasses, like the big honkin', I think, what are they called, sexy specs, where you put them on and your eyes get huge, and I really didn't like them very much because you can't, you can't get away from them. Like I, you, you start to realize how much of your painting is not actually physically looking at the model because you know, looking at the model, everything's magnified, everything's beautiful. And then I look up to go dunk my brush in the paint water and I can't see, or I go to mix something on the wet palette and I can't see. The magnifying glass I really like because it's right there in front of me. And so, you know, if I got good posture and I'm looking, my model is zoomed in, but everything else in my world is still normal. And so I just find it much more comfortable while still getting really, really good magnification. And it's, it's just it's just nice. Like I I usually don't like the magnification, but I think I usually paint way too fast for it to matter. Like usually, usually I, I go for good enough on my models because I really like to get things done. But I decided to really take my mind or my time on these Moonstone minis. And I'm really glad I did because I really, really like how she's turning out. I got a bunch more fairies to try different things out on. And if I can make the the magnifying glass part of my painting repertoire, I think that that will really, really help. Another funny thing is I painted her, I kind of base coated her without the magnifying glass. And then I painted only her body with the magnifying glass. 
and you can really see the edge. Like she looks great. Her wing looks real rough. So I almost wonder if I almost need to find a balance between uh, good enough and trying really, really, really hard, you know, sweaty painting so that it does, there's not, I can't see that line of, oh, that's where you stop trying. Cause I want it, I want it all to be really nice. But yeah, magnifying glass on the arm, very, very helpful. Moonstone, a very, very cool game. And I also have these little mushrooms and I really like, these are epic basing mushrooms. They're really cool. And I gave each fairy a different um, flavor of mushroom, a different species of mushroom. And so on her, since she's so saturated in pink, I decided to make her mushrooms really, really dull. But I think on the next fairy I'm going to paint, I'm going to try making it really desaturated. And then maybe the ground in the mushrooms really saturated in color. Like that's, I feel like what I really like about not painting 40K is I can try things out and learn things and then take those, that new knowledge and apply it to my 40K minis to make them even cooler. Because as much as I do love individual models, an army is awesome. And if that army, if that whole army can be even awesomer, it's uh, it, great. I used up all of my cool adjectives. <laughs> but yeah, I really like little tiny games because they just help me to learn so much. But enough about little games. Going back to my armies and how excited I am for Jukari, I was at my local, friendly local gaming store, and I found some minis that are perfect. I found the Gladiatrex mini from Age of Sigmar, and I think she is going to make an excellent uh, succubus for my witch coven, which I have one squad of witches in my army, and so she will definitely be leading it. And I might have more now that the rules changed, but I'm not quite sure yet. But this model, I, I like the succubus model for the Dark Eldar, but I mean, look at this thing. It's it's so wild with just that whip coiling all the way around the mini. This is going to be a really, really cool succubus. And I actually don't know who this other model is. It's a half naked guy on a statue. And this is going to be my Archon for my Dark Eldar. And please leave a comment below if you recognize who this guy is, because I couldn't figure it out and the shopkeeper couldn't figure it out. So <laughs> he just made up a price for this guy because these were secondhand minis. But this guy is so cool. He has got he's got a little bit of armor, but it looks like it could definitely be Dark Eldar. He's probably something for Heathen Knights of Slanesh, I would guess. But I don't know if it's from a Warcry team or or uh, or what's the Warhammer Thunderpants, Warhammer Underworlds. He's got like a big scimitar sword. He's really and he's clearly been kit bashed already into something Dark Eldar because he's got a broken. He's brought a broken Eldar blade. Classic Eldar. Ah, the Eldar models are so incredibly fragile. And he has a head from the Dark Eldar Void Scarred Corsairs. So somebody had the same idea as me to turn this guy into some kind of an Eldar miniature. And I'm going to make him even eldar -er. He actually has a little hole in his back where something was supposed to go. So I think I'm going to have a big spike coming out of his back. And then I'm going to try to green stuff his skin to be like stretched because Dark Eldar are just awful like that. But yeah, I think this guy, I might snap off his little dick armor, but I don't know. Maybe I'll keep it. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, he's definitely needs some really fancy dick armor, but I don't know if this is the dick armor I want to go with. So there's definitely there's definitely a lot of juice in this model, and I'm really excited to do some kit bashing and converting. But yeah, my Dark Elder army is going to be epic. I am going to beat Scott the Miniature Maniac with it in game and in painting. We'll see. We got a point system we're working on, but it is going to be fantastic. Almost as fantastic as the terrain available on our Patreon. Over there, we have a brand new set of terrain every single month. And this month we have the Ruined Temple, a modular set of components that can be built into the most magical and amazing set of ruins this side of the Mississippi and perfect for games like Warcry, Warhammer 40K or Kill Team or kind of anything else, maybe even that Moonstone game. And if you always want to be up to date on the goings on here on Eons of Battle and be entered into our monthly giveaways, this month we're giving away Age of Sigmar Dominion and we're picking three followers to receive this month's terrain. You can follow the link in the description below to sign up to our newsletter. Really, really fun week of wargaming. Games Workshop actually, like when the balance data slate dropped, I spent like three hours just trying to learn, just trying to get it all so that I could just think about it, so I could think about it for a while and update my lists and update my strategies. But I really have to get back to painting because I got a lot of stuff going on. Thanks for watching.